Sometimes those 1950s lights are nice, the big colored bulbs. I remember my mother, when I was a little kid, I was in uh, I was in plays. I was an actor when I was little. I started acting when I was like six. And the first guy that put me in this play was a guy named Scott. He was a director and he's dead now. Um, and he had a winter wonderland in his in the basement of his Long Island house, you know? He was a gay guy. I don't think he ever told... He lived with his dad. His dad was like a real weird guy. He's, I don't think he ever told his dad he was gay, but he did have a winter wonderland in his basement, so that might have given the dad some idea that there was something going on. There was no wife, but there was a winter wonderland. Like, so the guy... And by winter wonderland, I mean the guy would have like all these dolls and all these like... It was just a big deal thing. And I remember my mom took me and my father there and we like walked downstairs and this guy lived in this house and his father was like a psychopath. His father was like one of these Long Island guys that I think was in a war and just stayed in the war forever and had like combat helmets and guns and knives all over his room. He was just waiting for the next war and his son was downstairs, you know, with like a winter wonderland fucking display in the basement. It was a very interesting change from the first floor of the house to the basement And me and my father and my mother would like, we went over to this guy's house. We walked around downstairs into this fucking thing. And my dad was like, what the fuck is this? I mean, it was crazy. It was like the the, the level of detail, how meticulous it was. It was one of the first examples I had of, of somebody that was so meticulous and detailed about, you know, something. They were just obsessed uh, with it. And nobody would see it unless they knew him. Like it wasn't in his window or anything. It was the basement of his house. So he'd have to kind of bring people in. And when you walked in, the the living room was just like a regular shitty Long Island house. And then you would have to walk downstairs and then you would see this winter wonderland display. And it was wild. I always think about that sometimes. I think about like what that guy was about. Like, what he was about um, just being living in that house in Long Island, having that dad that probably hated him or maybe liked him. No, didn't like him, but maybe it was a, maybe they got along. I don't know. You never know. You know, I, I, I don't, I don't know. What, what do I know? But going downstairs every night and just creating this world, this winter wonderland world in the basement of this fucking Long Island house you know, while your father's upstairs loading his gun <laughs> and preparing for the next battle. Like what a like what a wild country this is. You know, what a what a genuinely wild country this is. And that's why the, the whole thing where everything's political now, you just I mean, how do you politicize that? How do you make that into Republicans and Democrats and big or small government the truly fascinating shit in this country is just how insane it all is you know and 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 you can't distill that to politics you can't just think about people's lives and the proximity how close they live to each other and these lives and these these crazy things you'll never know about people you'll just never know what people are into what their passions are what excites them you know most people just labor away at things they hate because they have to. It's just shitty, you know? And you'll never know, like, what that person was in. Like, you'll never know, like, you know, that you'd be like, oh, th- this person loved the clarinet, you know? Or, or or this guy likes, he likes torture porn, you know? That's his, <laughs> that's his thing, you know? And that's, you'll never know, like, what different subcultures people really get into. It's like, but it's just so crazy. I always think about that. That, to me, like, that type of creepiness, of Christmas, not over, not Halloween scare, boo, God, but it almost a scarier Halloween. Like it's a, a deeper. I think about that guy in his basement, just make you know crafting this little world where he could just go down there and be in this winter wonderland where all these dolls had these candles and everything, and he would just go down there and get away from his life and spend time down there while his father was upstairs just, you know, choking down Salisbury steak or whatever. And the the darkness of that moment, the idea of it to me, you know, when I think about Christmas, I think about things like that because he loved that winter wonderland. It was like he invented this little way. And then he just died. I think he had an aneurysm or something. I forget. He was just kind of, he just, doesn't exist anymore, that guy. But it was just an interesting 
It's an interesting thing when you think about this month. It's a dark month. Let it be dark. Don't have to fight that. There's a beauty to that. There's something special and interesting about that. It's not, there is a lot of funny shit. There's a lot of funny movies and stuff, but there's a darkness to it that I don't, you, it doesn't have to be silly. You know what I mean? Embrace what it really is. You don't have to get hammered and goofy. I mean, you know, unless you're young and it's fun and whatever, or you've earned it or you think, you know, I mean, but there, you can really just settle into what it is, which is the end of the year. It's the end of the cycle. The cold comes and the snow comes and everybody dies, you know? And that's, that's how I think of it. That's why I like that really somber Christmas music, you know? It's just, it, it prepares you for new. And then January is just death. And that's my birthday, January 22nd. I came into the world at the height of death, the coldness, the frost, you know? And then, and then things start to come alive again in the spring, but the winter is important. So I always think about that guy. I remember Scott, Scott, he was the director. And I mean, not of anything important. I mean, he, you know, he directed plays at the local school, you know, and uh, interesting, man, interesting stuff. To, you know, and he had fun, you know, he had a, he had a fun life. It wasn't a horrible life. He had friends and freaks that he was, you know, that the friends with that they'd go out to diners after shows. And, you know, that was, the th that was my first glimpse into what people's lives were like when they were outside of the mainstream. You know, people were out because a lot of these people were, you know, the th that theater group, they were like, they were fucking, uh, what did they do? They were, they were teachers or they were, some guy was a mailman. So some lady worked at a bank. Like they had jobs. They weren't making any fucking money, but then they would be in these shows and they would go out, you know, to eat after rehearsal or after the show. And it was like something for them to do. And it took them outside of their lives, you know? And that was the first glimpse I had of that. And I was six or seven. I remember internalizing that and being like, it's just fun to go to a diner late at night. Cause that's like the ultimate fuck you to the world. I remember at seven, I was like, oh, no one cares. You go, you go out late at night. You just say, you know, you sit, you say what you want. You laugh. You don't have to go to bed. You don't have to get up for school. Even though I did have to get up for school, but I was like, these people can just do what the fuck they want. It was my first. Then when I got older and I understood it, I was like, oh, that was their escape. That wasn't their life. Like that was their life. That was the part of life they liked or enjoyed, but their, their life was that bank or that fucking, you know, job at FedEx or whatever. They were able to get out of that and do these shows. It was just interesting looking back. It was my first glimpse of people that, and none of them really thought they were going to make it. There was no idea that they were going to get to the next level, that they were going to support themselves. Many of them were well in the middle age. They just enjoyed it. It was, and some of these people were so fucking talented and, and I've looked up some of them on YouTube and they're still fucking talented and they're still doing shit in Long Island, there's just theater in Long Island, you know, you know, and I feel, I feel guilty kind of when I YouTube them, you know, when I, when I see what they're doing, because I'm, I'm the most famous person in the world now. And I, I wouldn't, if, if any of them said hello to me, I would literally spit on them. And then I would have people that I walk around with, pull a gun on them and, and, <laughs> And, and just, no, I just, feel, I feel guilty because I was able to, to make money doing something I liked. And that's a tough thing. And, and, you know, not everyone gets to do that. That's kind of a cool thing to do. I don't know how long that'll last or, you know, if I'll end up blowing my brains out, probably both, you know, it'll probably last a while. And I'll also probably end up blowing my brains out, but I'll get a lot of people first. Don't you worry. No, I'm kidding. But... What I it was just interesting that whole that whole idea of that was the that was the first glimpse I had of like oh some people just you know they 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 escape and December feels like where we all feel like we escape we put lights on the houses we all pretend to give a shit about each other we all you know talk to people we haven't seen in forever we force to social interactions we go to the holiday parties we lube it up with with booze. You know, it's just fun. Everything's everything's supposed to matter a little bit more and everything like that. But there's an underbelly. There's a, there's another side to it that's a bit more serious and darker. And that side you appreciate when you sober up. When I so if, if that excites you, the idea of just having a little bit of a colder Christmas this year. You know, there's something nice about being sober and sitting there in judgment of everyone around you. I'm telling you, there's something beautiful about that. Just sitting there and looking at your family and judging them. 
looking at them and going, what the fuck is, what are they about? That's, you know, interesting. And then judging yourself, turn it inward, turn it right onto you. But I do love this month that I, 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 I do miss it. If I'm honest with you, I do miss, you know, you know, going to a holiday party, getting real fucking boozed up. And having a forced conversation with someone. There's not there's no greater feeling than going into something you think is gonna suck and then having a lot of fun. Whether it's a comedy show that you're doing, whether it's a date, whether it's a fucking ch- it's a challenging thing, you think this is gonna suck, and then you go, Oh, this is fucking great. And if it's a good holiday party, that's what it feels like. You go in, you're like, Oh, I'm just gonna get this over with, and then you know, sometimes it just becomes epic, you know, and then you fuck someone you shouldn't or whatever, or, you know, you know, you just say something you shouldn't, you know, and the, the booze is a, a big part of that. But, you know, if you sober up, you can always just go down to your basement and build that little winter wonderland you can escape to, you know, at two or three o'clock in the morning while everybody's asleep. You're like one of Santa's elves working in your little winter wonderland, making a perfect little Christmas village. And then upstairs, your your father snoring and dreaming about Hitler. <laughs> you know? I always think about that. It's a real, it's a wonderful Christmas. It's a wonderful Christmas memory. You know? That's really, that's what it's about. You know, if you if you need, go get a potato and put a Marlboro Light in its mouth and watch that and then press play on your phone. 